Okay, thank you very much. Um, I would like to share a couple of um, ideas in trying to understand multi-scale data assimilation from a mathematical point of view. But before I do this, I wanted to show you just uh, in three slides where multi-scale, where, where we are involved in multi-scale in the German weather service. So um, I, what we did in the last years, let me show you quickly three slides on the system. So we have a, an operational system um, now um, with an ensemble data assimilation, a hybrid ensemble data assimilation system, which basically consists of an LATKF and a 3D type variational system with a number of ingredients, but in the, the core algorithms are basically taken from Brian Hunt and his work and the Maryland group, but then um, for the operational system, you need a number of components, which I don't want to go into here at the moment. So this is run on a global scale, 13 kilometers resolution, 6.5 over Europe. You see, um, one second, oh yeah. you see this nest here indicated here. We have a 40 kilometer global ensemble, 20 kilometers over Europe, 40 members, and then a system which couples the LETKF with a variational method. And then we have a um, convection permitting regional system with uh, 2.8, hopefully soon 2.2 kilometers operational. It's, it's just uh, becoming operational in March now. Uh, 40 members, the same resolution here. It's also an LATKF based system. We call it KENDA, Kilometer Scale Ensemble Data Assimilation System. And um, the, we, we played a lot around with the different uh, setups here. And we now use basically the EPS boundary conditions generated by the ensemble Kalman filter on the global scale to drive the boundary, each ensemble member on the convective scale. And that has proven to be much better than any of the multi model approaches we had in the past. There's a big improvement for us. I mean, it's like 10, 15% improvement on basically every variable we can look at in the ensemble. And um, so, so we run this system, and it's basically a kind of a nested system of multi-scale. And, and so I've been looking into this over the last years a lot, um, trying to understand more about it and how you could do it. And then, of course, we have all the range of data, of data which are on, in all of your systems. And, and in particular, we know that we get hyperspectral satellite data in the future and have some of them already. And we have uh, 3D volume radar data, so very dense data on a convective scale. And we have uh, other data on a, more the global scale or the synoptic scale. And we try to understand in what way we can use them on different scales. So this is like the background. And I'm personally both involved in an operational center, being responsible for the operations. And at the same time, I'm at the university doing mathematics. And so I now dive into the mathematical part a little. Ah, uh, some scores, perhaps, to convince you that this is good. I nearly forgot this, but just what, two slides, yeah? If you look over time series, we introduced the new model in 2015, and then the data assimilation system here in 2016, at the beginning of the year. And you see the RSME here, 850 hectopascals. This is 24 hours, but it goes really down here. And this is international comparison. Don't look into who is who, but um, the lower, the better. And we are very happy that we kind of, with the new system, got a quality which is basically comparable to 40, all the 40 bars around. And then it depends on the setup and the lead times. If you look at the seasonalized score, you see here the improvement we, we made with this ensemble-based system. Purely ensemble. We never could afford any tangent linear. We didn't have the manpower to do this. So here's a, another one, three days. And it, it, it all looks similar. It, it's more or less good. But you see here we were the worst, and then we are now kind of even here. Yep, so, so this is really nice because we, we think we have a very good system now. And all the work we do and all the work some people do on the particle filters is all based on this. And it's all comparing to the system. So it's, it's com competitive scores. But let me go into this. Um, this was a takeaway message number one. These systems really work. And they are fantastic. And, and we really love, love it to work with that. And so now, now I try to understand uh, data simulation. And I go to 3D var. So let's just take here. My notation phi is, I, I, I'm in several communities, so sometimes I go from one notation to the other. But it's basically what you know. Here's the background functional. Here's the data. F is the data. H is the observation operator. Think of it as linear for the moment. And here's the increment. The analysis is given by the background, plus this typical uh, update 3D var physical space um, 
updates. So the idea is now, if you do multi-scale, can you understand it in this framework? And so um, the ba basic idea of multi-scale is uh, you, you look into broad, lower scales, yeah, so the basic behavior, and then you look into, into uh, here's the, the black curve, is, is a kind of me intermediate scale, and then you have a fine scale, and, and you have this red curve here with all the fine, fine resolution. And, and how can you deal with that in the data assimilation framework if you try to split the scales? Mathematically, you decompose your space into the, the big scales and the smaller scales and even finer scales, and you go on to some, some scale, and you have a hierarchy of spaces. And so looking into the literature, you find some ideas to first do data assimilation on the broad scale and then go to a finer scale and, and, and update your state, basically. So that would lead to the following thing. You have the same type of function here. I, I forget, uh, yeah, the, the background I subtract basically. So this phi here is now in one of these subspaces. So it's, it's the increment in each of the subspaces. And, um, and you have to, in each step, you have to subtract what happened in the previous subspaces. So you get an data, an updated data vector basically. And in the end, you add all the subspaces to your analysis step by step. There would be a an iterative, uh, what I call sequential multi-scale, you go to a first, a broad, a big scale first, then to a finer scale, a finer scale, and you add up the different increments, and, and you basically get this type of um, this type of update if you would do 3D var just naively in, in, in this way. So what, what will happen? So the basic idea of the talk is to understand what happens here. What are the errors? What can happen? So um, first, let's just try to understand it. Um, and I have this typical image just to explain what happens in a 2D case. So U1 here would be one space, and this U tilde, uh, U2, ah, this should be a tilde really. But this is the second space where you do your second analysis. And, um, and basically, if you would do an unregularized, so forget the background term for a moment, and I just do the data. And then in the second part, second step, I consider the background term. So if I just do the data term, it corresponds basically to a projection onto this first space. Then you subtract it. So you now have the, this is your first solution. So you subtract the error. Here's the error, basically. And you take now this difference here, and you do a second projection into the finer space. And that would be this projection. If the finer space is this one here, and it's not orthogonal, and you get this type of projection here. And then this would be the second solution from here to here. And then you add them in the end, and you get this multi-scale, successive multi-scale solution compared to the true solution if you would be in the full space. Yeah, and the error is basically this line here, which you can find here as well for your successive multi-scale. So that's the basic idea for the successive multi-scale. And if you now do the error analysis for this, then you don't have to go through all my equations here. Um, Basically, I said, OK, it's a projection operator P1 and a projection operator P2. And I have orthogonal projections. And basically, the arrow will boil down to, on the next slide, to this product here in 2D uh, with two spaces. And it's usually non-zero. So if you do successive, first the one scale, then the other scale, it's not the same what you get as if you would do just this full problem in one go. And this is the arrow. And the arrow can be calculated. I did this here. And in, in principle, it's, it's going being taking the general case of this particular image here, which I put here again. So you, you do one step of projection, you do another step of the iterated projection, you get this term. Here is, is what you get if you just write this down. The, the full solution is P1 on this plus this term. And here, the, so the error, you subtract the, the truth from this. And this is a little calculation if you go over it. The identity is just re rewritten in this. And if you now write this in here and, and look at the complete arrow, you get exactly this product of the two projections here onto the perpendicular spaces. So it, you, you, this proves it's not equivalent to do this. It shows what the error is in a simple situation. And also, it shows if these project, this product of the projections would be 0, you would get the same. And, um, and it's, 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 if this space u would be this space, then you end up here in the black curve. Um, so the idea of, of all of this is now, um, if, if you make an error doing sequential multiscale, perhaps you can go on doing it and reduce your error. And that that's iterative sequential multiscale. And I, I show you this uh, uh, graphics in the next slide. But it's basically doing sequential multiscale first, go over your m scales, and then restart and do it again. 
So next level is L, and then it goes L, uh, here one and two, two. Just we do sequential multiscale iteratively. And what happens here, then you get basically the error estimate. Let me just show you one formula and then the slide uh, to explain it. You basically get your error from the successive multiscale power L. Uh, in the op this is our op operators, and if you look into the cosine of the spaces, of the, of the angle between the spaces you use in your multiscale, this is your error estimate for sequential multiscale. Um, so if, the, if they are all orthogonal, this will be zero, and then the error is zero, it's fine. If they are not orthogonal, this is how it goes to zero, and this is basically just describing what happens here. The error in the multiscale, this would be the first step of the multiscale, this would be the second step of the multiscale, you end up somewhere here, and these two projections describe exactly what I had on the formula, and if you now iterate this, you end up with the error going to zero, basically, step by step. And it, it, uh, in mathematics, there's a whole theory on alternating projections, and sequential multiscale basically can be understood as alternating projections onto different subspaces, yeah? So that's the basic insight of the whole thing, is, is the unregularized version is alternating projections, and you're taking this into account, you begin to set up your systems, really, and the whole mathematics works out. So I have ignored one important thing, and that is uh, we have a background term, and I've just left it away with the projections. So you, we know if we have the uh, first guess and data, we somehow get a balance between the two and, and a posterior distribution, and we have a background term to take into account. And if you do this in a very sim simple case, then your iterate will be a background term, and a, here's the, the true term, and, and you get a convex combination of the two, it's well known. And just iterate this, and you basically end up with, um, with a formula giving you the full, you can do this explicitly if you write it in this simple way and forget about the operators, and you can do it also with the operators. So uh, the point is, this term looks very similar to doing the one step, this is the iterative one, but now you have the background term comes in here and the regularization parameter here, the weighting between the two comes, it goes into this formula. One minus alpha would be the one step, this is the iterated with L iterations. And uh, basically the same with operators, if you write down Kalman operator and your observation operators, you get the same formula but now with, with your K H, and here's the K tilde H is the one you should use if you have a background term, and this one is the one you would use if you would do one step. And the basic takeaway message is here, you can take into account the background term, but then you have to change the weight between the two if you do this iteration. And you have to do it in a way taking the L square root of your original operator in principle, or between the weighting. So what the suggestion is basically, um, if you have a weighting which is alpha in the one-step case, and now you want to do regularized, so with background term iteration, take a beta weighting and solve this type of equation. So take the Lth root of 1 minus alpha to calculate your beta, and then use that, and you will get the same solution in the case of iteration as if you would do one step. And you can take advantage of all your iterations. So. Um, so I, I, we tried this out. This is a theory. Theory is a proof. So for simple setups, you can just prove that this works. So here's we, we use the kind of multi-scale basis for like radiance retrieval type of um, applications, and um, and then we, we we basically carry this out. Here you see basically a, an example of some function. We, we played around with various various uh, functions to to look at. And you see the, the full reconstruction, one step multi scale, and, and you see also convergence in, towards the um, one step solution. And you can look at the full error because you are, of course, in a subspace. We took a true solution not being in the same subspace here to avoid inverse crimes uh, too well, to, to get to two good solutions which are unrealistic. And the same, all examples look similar here. You, so you get this type of behavior. So to sum this up, the takeaway messages. Um, we have studied a generic setup for sequential multi-scale, go to broad sp space first and to finer scales. Eli uh, aliasing is an important question, which I have not talked about, but you have to be very careful here to leave away data in, each of the in any of the steps. 
Large errors are possible in the general case. Successive multi-scale solutions will not be equivalent to full scale, but iteration can reduce the error significantly and it corresponds to iterative projections. And in a cycle data assimilation environment, we kind of naturally do sequential multi-scale, but of course we have the model in the middle. And that is a, a topic of current work. We are looking into this with a PhD student. And um, this is in a paper here given, and also I would like to point to a recent monography by Gen Nakamura and myself about inverse modeling introduction into inverse problems and data assimilation with a lot of tools, 500 pages, uh, mathematical tools for data assimilation. Thank you very much. Thank you.